ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವ ವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ದಟ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ಫಿನಿಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ಫಿನಿಟ್ ವೈನ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ಫಿನಿಟ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ಫಿನಿಟ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ರಿಮೈನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ಫಿನಿಟ್ ವೈನ್ ಐ ಆಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಮ್ಯಾಥಮೆಟಿಷಿಯನ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ದೆ ಕುಡ್ ಯು ಮೇಕ್ ಎ ಫಾರ್ಮುಲಾ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ he said no he cannot do it but ramanujam could have done it because ramanuj is a man who knew infinity so i revered monks and others devotees and friends i feel humble today to stand on this uh, platform because many luminary swamis and realized souls have uh, have uh, uh, talked from here and but i present here today as this is a learning experience rather than the teaching or preaching experience so i am really as a student rather than as a pedagogue and this i learned from chidekananda who said that there is a called growth mindset this is coined by carol doeck of the stanford university in the growth mindset you always try to learn so thakur swami ji and shrima were all of growth mindset thakur said jabot bachi tabot sikhi that means as long as i live so long i learn and swami ji used to emphasize always the, the means that perfect the means and the goal will come and then from hari namananda i learned that in spiritual life if you don't like something at first like puja and do it for others and then teach in a group and then you will or uh, in learn something and enjoy it sangat sanjayate kamo gita says that from association you develop the interest and, uh, and and then you enjoy it and then uh, from another member of my family i learned what is called discipline light that if you want to do progress in anything in the spiritual or the secular life you need a discipline light a discipline life would make you to routine so you need to make a routine so a routine you should do for put for hours and seven days a week you say that i want some free time well put that in your routine <laughs> you say i want to enjoy some tv well put that into your routine that this time this time i will I do it okay routine actually you know uh, uh, holy mother was the embodiment of discipline life she used to wake up 3 o'clock in the morning uh, and then work until 10:30 11 o'clock in the night and work joyfully and effortlessly so that is actually the embodiment of discipline life uh finally i'd like to uh, uh, give a warning that if i was as uh, uh, i was for promotion for any or professorship i will not give this lecture because the, my colleague will think that i have got crazy i have lost my mind what they call learned fool or in uh, in, in in gospel say pandit murkh that's uh, so so this is this is not the time for them and i do not know how i got into this here because um, it is not all my fault and gita says panchavani mahabhav karanani nivodome there are five causes for ex- every action i cannot be all five and totha garan ji used to say there is a doibam there is a last cause is doibam he used to say kapalam dhavati agre the fate is leading you so you cannot do anything so this is what i am now and so if the people here came to learn something i say they can leave now because the people of the vedanto i am not going to tell anything new to them the people in the uh, students of the biology i am not going to tell anything new to them so they can uh, live i see none of is uh, living here so i um, use the what i call the trump card in my class what is the trump card and i used to say that there will be quiz at the end of the lecture <laughs> when i say that 20 uh, 50% of the people will get up and ready to leave then i said but what i will say today will be in the final then everybody turns back and sit down 
So remember, there will be quiz, okay? <laughs> okay. Now, uh, uh, so I'd like to define, so we scientists are very, uh, would like to define everything, because you want to be precise. Precise means then, you know, we bound to uh, draw a line, a limit. So nobody can enter into this and contradict me. That's what this, we scientists do. But this is actually, we do not know that we are actually building a prison by that. And this is a tendency we had right from the beginning when we became homo sapiens come into this world. We found this world is so hostile. Everybody is trying to uh, fight each other. They are having two things, either have a lunch or become a lunch. So, so, so to prevent, protect us, we build what we call home, a wall. We did not know this is actually a prison we are building. Prison we are building, we are limiting ourselves. So if we have a prison built, so we need a prison guard. Right? Now who is our prison guard? Who you think will be our prison guard? Our spouse. <coughs> Who is going to tell, don't do this, don't go out, do this, why we made a mess, so on and so forth. You say that I'm not married, so I don't have a prison guard. There is a prison guard for every situation in your life. If you are a student, you have a teacher. If you are children, you have a parents. If you have a disciple, you have a guru. And if you say, I don't have any of those, uh, then you have your conscience as your prison guard. But somebody might say, well, I don't have a prison guard, but I have a golden uh, 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 angel. So then I, my home has become uh, uh, heaven. So yes, you, even if your home is heaven, still you are in the prison. Because Swamiji said, the song of the soul is the freedom. All who you want to become freedom. We want to have freedom. Why freedom? Freedom is because there's two goals in our life. It's called Atvantik Dukkha Nibhriti Paramo Sukhaprapti. Cessation of all miseries and having all the bliss, enjoyment. So if you want to have that, you will have to have freedom. Sankracharya says, Jivan Mukti Sukhahetabe. What is the ease of having this uh, 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 human life? Only reason is that you want to enjoy bliss while living. Jivan Mukti is not postmodern human sufficient. You need to have enjoy the life while you are a uh, 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 bliss while you are living. So that's why we come to this one, and for that we need freedom. Now, I want to define, start to define the subject here. So, what is Vedanta, and what is life? These are the main thing, two things here. Vedanta is there are a number of definitions. One is Vedanta is the Upanishad, the end of Vedas, books. The other is Vedanta is one of the six philosophy of the Hindu system. There is a broader definition of Vedanta is Veda means knowledge, Anto means final. So final knowledge, supreme knowledge, Brahma Vidya, Brahma Gano. This is what really Vedanta is and that's what I'd like to use on in, in this talk today. And what is life? Life is depends on whom you ask. When I go to gym, I ask my friend, how are you? Say, I am alive. Don't you see, I come here. So when I am in gym, I am alive. If you ask the young uh, person, say, yes, uh, life is like going to the party. And to your mother, life is the joy of the, uh, getting, uh, taking care of your children. So life is depends on whom you live. So science says, there are two definitions of life. We have the two criteria. What is one? One is that the that the uh, 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 that it has to that life is that the, 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 you respond to the environmental stimuli. When somebody picks you, you say, "Ah, that's life." Environmental stimuli, either maybe internal or external, from thoughts or from or from outside. The other is that. You transmit the information to the offspring that you act, you act against the entropy, against the disorder. Life is that you can transmit information to the entropy. You cannot. You can protect yourself against the disorder. 
that's the life. Those are the two definitions that are life. But Vedanta objects to this definition. Vedanta says, no, that's not the definition of life. What is the definition of the life? Vedanta says it's the manifestation of the prana. Manifest of the prana or consciousness. That is the definition of the life. The prana can remain dormant or manifest. So there is something you see inner does not mean it's not life. So, so somebody asked then, what is in science there is a clear cut definition between the life and non life? This is the table is not life, I am alive, you are alive. There is a clear definition. Dead person is not life, live person is life. But then, if you go and ask that the, uh, the, the, the one day the uh, Sri Ramakrishna was uh, told by uh, uh, M, the gospel, right of the gospel, that, sir, we should not um, uh, worship a clay image because they are inert. They don't respond. So Thakur says, what do you say, a clay image? I don't see any clay image. I don't see Mimmoi. I see Chinmoi. I see everything vibrant. I don't see it. When Brahmananda was asked that, how to differentiate between the matter and the spirit, he I don't know. Show me the boundary. I don't see any boundary. Everything spirit. How do I? There is no difference between matter and spirit. Narendra Thakur one day said to Narendra, everything is God, everything is spirit. Narendra was making jokes to Hazra. Thakur said, everything is God. This pot is God, this table is God, everything is, everything is Brahman, God. Then Thakur came and said, what are you talking about? Yes, we are making some funds of your teaching. Everything is God. Then Thakur touched him. Just by touching for the next three days, Narendra, the Swami Vivekananda, future Vivekananda, could not separate between the life and non-life. Non -life. Everything is our spirit. He banged his head for the rail to see if it is truly the hard iron red or not. So there is no clear distinction between the life and non-life according to Vedanta. Everything is either dormant, maybe life, or or not. Uh, uh, or not, um, uh, 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 either dormant or manifested. So, so, uh, so now, before we go any further, we'd like to get some ground rules. These are called axioms. Axioms are basically the principles which are accepted without any proof. They don't argue that you ask without any proof. That's why you ask axiom, sir. So, what is the axiom of the God? The God is that we cannot define God in one way or other. It could be Saguna, Nirguna, Nirakar, Sakar, Kali, Brahma, Vishnu, Jehovah, anything you call. Ekam Sat Vipra Bahuda Bhadunti. God is one, and the people call by many names. That's what God is. So, so God, Sri Ramakrishna said, Bhagavaner Iti Karajana that you cannot make a limit to God. God, you cannot make a say, this is not God. You cannot say that. And then uh, what is the origin? Origin means something new coming out. Something, but in the phenomenal universe, everything has a cause, there is origin. Gita says, na sato viddhato bhavo, na bhavo viddhato sato. That which unreal does not exist. And that which exists cannot be unreal. Real cannot cease to exist. So this is the, uh, and also Upanishad says, Adi Bhantecha Yat Nasti Bhartmane Opi Tattata That which does not exist in the beginning or in the end does not exist at the present. So that's what you accept. Now the other thing is that there is a also change. Everything in this phenomenal universe is changeable, is changing. We have to remember that nothing is permanent in this uh, universe. So if there is everything is changing, how do you, you have to measure change using either something less changing or unchanging? So by logic then there has to be something unchangeable against which we measure all changes. And that unchangeable is called God, Brahman, Vishnu, 
or anything you call by any name, that is God, unchangeable, the permanent reality. Now we are coming to the cause and effect. In this universe, phenomenal universe, everything has a, uh, a cause and effect. Nothing is self-created. Soyambhu, it is called Soyambhu. Nothing is self-created. Everything has to have a cause and effect. You remember this because we will come to this later. The cause and effect, this, that's the law of the cause and effect. Everything uh, must have a cause and effect. There is no other way that we can uh, and say. So there was a, and this cause and effect to cause this goes spiral. This is not a circular but spiral. That's how the evolved evolution takes place. It's called spiral. Cause and effect to cause, effect, cause, the anything. And this you can see also in any equation. If you do the chemistry equation, you say reactants equals to product. You see, they are always has to be equal to each other. And then uh, we are curious. We always want to know uh, the cause. So there is a little boy. His name is Orun. He asked his mom, Mom, where do I come from? Mom was cooking and tell that, well, Orun, you know, you come from angels. Where else? Then Orun went to his dad. And dad was watching a TV football game, Rams vs. Raiders. <laughs> and <laughs> asked dad, dad, where do I come from? Dad said, you don't know, you come from monkeys. I go and don't disturb me now. <laughs> now what Swami Solomon is, is going to uh, is tell that punchline is coming, okay? <laughs> so that boy went to his mother and said, mom, you tell me that I come from angels, but my dad told me that I come from monkey. Who is true? <laughs> mom says, Orun, both of us true. From my side, you come from angels. From dad's side, you come from monkeys. <laughs> Boy felt happy and went to, went to play. So we have two things in our uh, human nature. One is the animal side, animal hood, and the other is divine hood. And human hood is actually is in the middle, dynamic situation. Sometimes you go into the one side or the other. And Sri Ramakrishna, you say, we are manus in Bengali, means man, hoos. Manus means measure, hoos means awareness. That we are human because we can measure our awareness, that is measure our situation in the, of whether we are divine or animal, we can know that. That's why you call Manus. And uh, now the subject-object relationship. This is going to be important. I want you to know that this may, may be in the quiz also. <laughs> Scientists are very precise and as you say limit, and they want to say that you know, your results, conclusions, and theory should be objective. That's the first one of the main criteria of the scientist, scientist that it should be objective, not biased, not subjective. And um, uh, uh, so sub, not subjective. So Vedanta says that you will never learn the truth about the real thing about the object by scientific analysis. This is a very bold statement. And let's see. I see my friend Swami Radha Kishan there, sitting there. He is looking at me sometimes. And I know sure that he is Radha Kishan. And he has ID cards with him that in 7.6 billion people in the world, there is no one like him. That's for sure. But how did I get the information from that he is Radha Kishan? Simply some light is coming from him and entering my retina and in the receptors of the uh, roads and cons. And then it is becoming an electrical impulse. And that is being transmitted to my brain cells, brain centers. And their brain centers is analyzing the electrical impulse and, 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 and then determining and finding using a computer-like like software and making image in my 
uh, 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 mind and saying that this is that is that who is that is Radha Krishna. So think again then. But what? How do I know he's Radha Krishna? Only I I got something that light from him, nothing else. And that light was what is done to the light. That light was created with electrical impulse. Then what happened to the electric impulse? That went to the brain and there the computers found this is other kissing. Anything else. So how do I know that what who is the other kissing is? Who is really is? Do I know? I cannot uh, I, I really do not know what I simply have an image that I create in mind. Think about now we have seen 3D movies, right? Everybody has nowadays has seen 3D movies. Star Wars, Star Trek. Then when you go there, we see that we go up and down and we feel scared. And then some fireball comes at you, I dodge it. And then, so what is the difference between that the 3D movie, I'm getting the information simply from the light and getting the information from Radha Krishna simply also from the light. What is different? I'm analyzing that in my brain. I'm analyzing this in my brain also. And then, Actually, I saw another movie. There was a, uh, two cars running in the uh, uh, street highway, and one car crossed uh, the other, uh, cut, and that car behind got mad. And then he again split it and then cut it. And so they began to fight each other, cut each other. Eventually, they crashed. Both cars crashed, and they were really, uh, the people are in pain. They are coming out, they come out, there is some in blood, there is pain there. And I was ready to uh, take out my uh, cell phone and call 911, nobody is doing anything. Then I saw a car come and then uh, the, the car got out and then called 911 and the ambulance came, everything came and they took the people uh, to the hospital. And this is all in the movie. So, what has happened? I simply, instead of becoming a observer and witness, I became a participant. Isn't that right? I became a participant. That's what I did. Uh, uh, basically, that's, that's, that's what happened. And this is actually, in one, sometimes it happens uh, in, in me also. Let me see. President Obama and his cabinet secretaries are discouraging the use of the term swine flu since a person cannot get it by eating pork or eating pork and it is hurting the pork industry. So what do pigs have to do with UCLA professor Debbie Nyack calls pigs the perfect host organism for this type of illness. These slides show how a single tiny virus can make you sick in a matter of hours. So this was happened in 1970. Uh, uh, 2009, and this also I was in the, uh, uh, quite a few times in the TV and uh, 1976 also. But when this was happened, the anchorman said that we are transmitting the image of the flu virus to the TV channel. And after that, they got a call, a frantic call from a, a mother. The mother said, my uh, daughter got infected because uh, she touched the TV while the virus was on. That's real life. Somebody can get me. <laughs> what is what is? So you can see that we can be, you know, depending on what we think is real or unreal, the blur, the line between the life and all life becomes blurred. So then, of course, he was told, no, you don't have to go to see doctor, and then uh, because this is okay, it's the only picture, okay. So now, Vedanto, life biology. Vedanta deals with Jiva, Jagat and Ishtara and science deals with Jiva and Jagat and biology deals with Jiva. Vedanta says, uh, biology says that, the, uh, science says that if we know much detail about the Jiva and Jagat, if we know about everything, how things work, then we don't need to think about Ishtara. We can have a, uh, the science and its uh, offspring technology can give us a happy, a good life. We can feel comfortable, we can enjoy life. 
but you know the Bharti Hari. He says, Tato Kim, Tato Kim. So what next? So what next? There is always a question will be there in the human's mind that so what? So what? And then what is the so so we need to know then not to know about the uh, 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 the life life and and, 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 and Jagat. So there is a, before we can know anything about the life, we need to, we need to see where we are. We are in the universe, so we need to say a little bit about the creation. The creation has, uh, has there are two basic theories in the science. One is called Big Bang, another is String Theory. And Big Bang Theory is that now using the astronomy, physics and everything, it is clear that universe, this universe had a beginning around 15 billion years ago. Had a beginning. And from there, it's expanding. It's expanding, like explosion, expanding, expanding using, four, the, using a, what is called Hubble's constant. Hubble's constant expanding in that speed, continuously. And then it says that the, uh, that the, but he doesn't know what was before the Big Bang. The so Big Bang was started from a point called singularity. Singularity is like a bindu in the Vedanta. But if you ask question, what was before singularity? How did the singularity arise? Science cannot answer that. It starts everything from the beginning and then on. They can explain everything. But what was before? They cannot. But you remember that one of the axioms that everything in this universe has to have a cause. So that axiom is not fulfilled. We are not seeing how it does. And then what happened? This Big Bang theory followed according to the Einstein's uh, 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 the, uh, theory of relativity and general theory. Einstein is followed accordingly. Is you know E equal to M C square and so on. So there. Uh, Einstein was not happy because he could not at that time find out he wanted to have a theory of everything. His theory only uses one, one of the forces, this is called gravity and space and time. But the other three forces of the nature, nuclear, two nuclear forces and the electromagnetic force, he could not use that. He is not easy. And so Einstein, and then at that time in 1927, uh, Heisenberg came out with the theory of uncertainty. Simply says that in the, uh, at any point, uh, the, both the momentum of the particle as well as the position of the particle can be determined together. You can determine one or the other. And Einstein did not like the uncertainty. He used, he was like with the, uh, the law, rules, universe is governed by rules and laws. That was his uh, idea and he should there. So one day, and after this thing, I do not know it happened or not, but this I, <laughs> I little make up and a little heart from Swami Vasudevananda. So one day, Einstein was in a very pensive mood. So somebody asked him, Sir, what are you thinking about? Because of this uh, uh, <laughs> Heisenberg situation, the spontaneity, he didn't like it. He said, I want to know what is in the mind of the God. I want to know what is in the mind of God. Then Swami was says, if I was there, I would say, sir, if you want to know what is in the mind of the God, instead of finding this way, that way, you go straight and ask God. And if Einstein tells me, okay, but how do I find God? Uh, before that, you remember in the um, Sri Ramakrishna Gospel, uh, Sri Ramakrishna said, if you want to know the wealth of Jodhumalli, you don't try to find how much money he has, how many houses he has, you go ask him. You don't ask this person, that person is friend, the, what Jodhumalli has, you go ask directly him. So Einstein says, if Einstein says, that, how do I find God? I would say they are straight, there are four highways, very straight. They are called yogas. Dhyano, yoga, Dhyano, Dhyano, Gyano, Karma, Bhakti. 
you follow any of these highways, you will find God and you can ask, Sir, what is in your mind? So, the other theory is called the string theory. So, that was the uh, Big Bang theory and this is the other, uh, the other string theory. This came in 1970s, string theory. And this is called the theory of everything. Here, it accounts for all the four forces of the nature. In the string theory, it says there are multi verses. There is just you know, one verse, many verses. And Big Bang is like either a fusion, one universe dividing into two, or fusion, two universes making into one. So that is the Big Bang. So that means that there is no beginning or no end. It is continuum, like Hindu philosophy, that creation and dissolution is continuing. So this is like Hindu philosophy. So Big Bang, uh, the string theory actually uh, 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 understand that uh, that this is a, a similar, there is no end to this question. So science cannot, uh, can, cannot answer the question why, how and why the universe came from and why, what was before there. Now Vedantic view, Vedantic view is very important here. Vedanta says that the as the Vedantic sages looked very deeply into the life and the nature and universe. They looked very deeply. They started from what do you know? What do you know? They said we start from we have three stages in our everyday. What is that? That the waking, dreaming, and sleeping. And we won't also know that in the dreaming, what we create comes entirely from the mind, nothing else. And but the sages did not stop there. They used their mind, sharpen their mind, they concentrated their mind, and they went beyond these three stages. That stage is called Turiya, or transcendental stage. And what they found there? They found infinite Satchidananda. They found infinite bliss, infinite uh, knowledge, Satchidananda, in, in that stage. And they are convinced that stage is there. Because they understood that from what they call aparaksanubhuti, that means direct knowledge, not mediated by any sense organs. So they are convinced there, there is such a state of Turiyo. Then when they came out of the Turiyo, they found this phenomenal universe. So they are convinced that this phenomenal universe is coming out of the Turiyo, what we see. But how it came, they, are, they did not know. This is same thing happens here in our stage. We go to sleep every day. I try to experiment, you try to do that also. I try to remember when do I feel sleep? And I could not figure it out. What is the last thing I heard? Is there a transition between the waking state and sleep? I could not figure that out. And so they said that transition between that state from the Turiyo to this phenomenal universe, we, we cannot figure it out. That is like, that's like a chicken and egg uh, situation. We don't know which comes first. And they are bold enough to admit that. This is what is in the, they call in the Nasodhya Sukta, the uh, hymns of creation. They, they said that, that there is a, uh, there was at that time, they say, and in, they say, when we say, there is no day, no night, no immortality, no death, and everything cause was emerged into, emerged into creation. Cosmic fruits are in the previous, uh, uh, stored in the cause, and so there is no beginning, there is no end. So they really clearly said that we cannot say, we do not know how the creation comes and how the uh, 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 what is the stages from that? And there is a, this is, you can say that this is what the, actually Shankar says that the, the creation is a, is actually superimposition. There's really nothing changes. Brahman remains as such. Rope and uh, snake example they give. So you can see there is a superimposition that really is no creation. So there is no uh, stages in between. Uh, how do you find? It's not a transformation. And there is the uh, there are a number of views. 
because Vedanta didn't try to explain uh, really what is the, uh, did not emphasize creation much. You know, number one, it says that we are in the prison now, we have to get out. This is like a Buddhist story. You have been hurt, and what do you want to do? That you want to get out. You don't want to know where the arrow came from, where this came from. You want to get out. Vedanta says that we are in the prison, we want to get out. That's our goal. We want freedom. Not how it happened. We cannot explain that. The other view is that the, uh, in the Vedanta is that the Swaguna Isvara, or Isvara is both creator, efficient cause of the efficient cause and the material cause, like a spider, let's say, example. The efficient cause and the material cause. So you can, uh, you can have, uh, so uh, Isvara is being create, uh, creating both uh, this world. There is ways that you can explain there. How do you, how does it do it? And you can make a different philosophy like remember, but they could not be experimentally verified. Remember that nobody knows how the God creates. They could not Rishis could not figure it out. That so that is kind of a hypothetical business. How the God creates this universe? But we know it creates because if we accept the God and the universe, the one comes from the other. And Einstein is that. Everything says that can be transformed in energy. E equal to mc square. All the matters is basically can be energy. This is a real formula. But then this is nice. There is no problem there. But this energy is not material energy. Then you add another thing, the consciousness before that. And this becomes chid shakti, chid shakti. That it has become the, uh, the mother, creator. Then Everything is fine. Then the Sankha view is that there are two uh, permanent uh, things, the Purus and Prakriti. They are dual dualistic. There are two of them, and the Prakriti, for instance, comes in contact or closeness with the Purusa. It changes and it changes into all this uh, form. They become Mahat, Buddhi, and then 24 elements, and they mix with each other, and then become uh, 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 the, they become universe. Then the Puranic view. Puranic view says that uh, God in three forms makes himself three for Brahma, Vishnu, and Mohesh. Brahma is the creator, Vishnu is the maintainer, and Mohesh is the destruction of the universe. And the, so the Brahma creates the universe, what you call Hiranagarbha or uh, golden egg, from there the universe is created. And there you see all those things again, similar to Sankho, that how the different uh, things comes out and then creation starts. Now the origin of the life. Now you said the life. We have now the life and its evolution. Scientific origin of the life is called abiogenesis. That means life comes from non-life. Life comes from non-life. There are a number of stages in the abiogenesis. When this earth was formed, it was very hostile, it was very hot, and at that time, we need four elements, five elements actually, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and sulfur for the creation of the life. And then these, either these elements were created in the earth or they came from the comets somewhere outside. But life cannot come from the comet because the environment is so hostile, life cannot sustain as we know in this earth. And then there is four stages, is cosmic life, Cosmic, that's when it, in the beginning, the uh, elemental creation, then there is geological form in which there is a, a concentration of these elements so that can create life. And then there was a chemical form, synthesis that took place, and the simple things like nucleotides and, uh, uh, and the amino acids are formed by synthesis. And then after that, came the biological. That's when the real life 
uh, uh, came that polymerization came so science believes that life is a byproduct of the uh, 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 synthesis that is the uh, uh, getting complex and complex situation then it becomes life becomes but remember this axiom that something cannot come out of nothing remember that so life can according to vedanta can remain dormant or manifested so according to vedanta yes all these things happens but they are life is dormant one need the actual type of real type of instrument to manifest the light that's what that's basically is the creation is coming falling now you know the i work with flu you, you know that and and uh, influenza actually we can create influenza from nucleotides which are like a sugar there are inert things and yes i have done it we can create it so that's one of the uh, things that people think that the new virus can be created and they can cause a lot of problem that's why uh, there is a lot of restriction on doing kind of experiments so we can actually do so a proud scientist like me some way made god okay how do you made god i don't know then you can say maybe narad came and took him to there the proud scientist said to the god sir i hear that you can make life from that god said yes scientist said so what i can do that too <laughs> you want me to show you say, yes show me say, give me some dart god said get your own dart <laughs> so the scientist fell silent <laughs> so 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 that's what he, <laughs> that the science is the uh, 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 creation of the life that uh, something you need be something to to create life just life first be there so now the origin and now the evolution comes how the life started there is a controversy there the after the why that uh, scientists think that rna is the first thing that came because rna can act as an enzyme or ribozyme but rna is been unstable somebody thinks that protein must be there because protein can protects rna and the viruses we say are they alive or, or dead there is a controversy viruses if you keep in the air they will not grow but if you put in the uh, living uh, being they will multiply so who are, who are they alive or dead and even they are further go there is called viroids and there is called prions proteins even they can uh, they can also uh, blur the further so definition of scientific definition of the life is also blur because it is not a, this or that it is not a transition there it is a blood situation so whether life begin as a single life living cell or stomatolite stomatolites are like the uh, clumps they, they, they join together so there is a controversy there whether darwin's theory started as simple life or, or, or stomatolite Uh, so 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 there uh, then after there then what happened there was a uh, many uh, many things uh, came out evolution takes place from single life to there and then the history of life it says the life begin as a single cell they do not so they cannot prove that life begin in single cell or not but you see one thing i want to mention here that one thing does not lead to another a monkey does not become a man a ape does not become a gorilla does not become a lamb man they are different you see here they are showing that the one that there is a tree there but branches in the tree so there are intermediates which are not shown here is is evolved evolving not one becoming the other and there are three branches here one is bacteria and the archaea and the other eukaryotic animal cells and difference between this uh, the prokaryotes or bacteria or the cells that one has a nucleus uh, 
on the nucleus and the other do not have the nucleus. Main difference is that. Now, so that's the life begins and then how the modern man came, that it says the different stages of this modern man came, they started from uh, of the different stages and and eventually modern man came, homo sapiens came around 50,000 years ago. 50,000 years ago. And from there on the modern man came. So evolution in the science is bottom down, bottom up, we say bottom up. From nucleotides, from the elements go up and up and up and create molecules and then from molecules you create uh, small uh, item animals, single cells and then further complex and further and eventually man. And uh, in Vedanto, the creation as far as is known is that is the top down, that the man was created in the beginning from Brahma and those man was called First man created by the Brahma is Manu and 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 Manu and Satarupa and then from there it go went down. Actually this man at the stage we are is a graded down and, 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 and Krishna says in the Gita that that the yogos the knowledge I gave in the beginning uh, has been lost. That's why I'm giving you new knowledge. So there is a gradual decline from the knowledge or the human form that came and in the uh, 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 gradual decline. So we are going down, and, but science is going up from the bottom up. But in Hindu cosmology also says that it is, uh, it is uh, uh, bottom up. It is not like a top down only bottom up. And this is shown by the ten incarnations that has been shown that the first the, uh, uh, the was the fifth incarnation that is in the Matsu, in the water, and then came the uh, turtle, Kurma, which can live in both land and animal, and then the boar or Boraho, which which is a mammal and lives in the um, uh, uh, land. Then came the lion man, not a single intermediate between the human and the animal life and then uh, uh, then the Parasuram who is the actually physical uh, strength, most physical element of the incarnation of the God is in the uh, Parasuram, he is strong and he was the first dweller. And then came the Ramachandra who is said to be the Purushottama, that the human form at its best, highest human form. There in Ram, Ramachandra's time, there was a quality of justice, compassion. Those things are most in, in, involved in Ramachandra. Then the Krishna in the Dwapar Yuk is the Krishna is the it was it was physical, there are some miracle thing, but also mostly was love. Love. Love is the uh, uh, thing that was manifested most in Krishna. And then of course the uh, Buddha, Jesus, Chaitanya, Ramakrishna and others. And they were little physical things, they are physical strengths or miraculous things, little, but they were mostly compassion, love are the things that they they say uh, they, they they showed. And of course the uh, last thing is yet to come, Kolki. We do not know. Swamiji, and some, my time is running out, so I've got to give some quotes for Swamiji, and then things that was not clear, you can come to that discussion in uh, period in the in the uh, green room, and then we can talk about that. Swamiji says the whole process of the evolution is soul struggles to manifest itself. It is a constant struggle against nature. It is a struggle against nature, not conformity to nature that makes the man what it is. We hear a great deal of living in harmony with nature and being tuned with nature, but this is a mistake. 
So you should struggle against nature, not live in conformity with nature. Indeed, Swamiji says, Hindus were Spinozoists 2000 years before the birth of Spinoza, Darwinians centuries before the birth of Darwin, evolutionists before the birth of uh, doctrine of the evolution has been accepted by Huxley in a part time. And, and before the word like ex evolution was known in the language. So those were actually present in the Hindu cosmology, Hindu philosophy before. Highest evolution of the man is through sacrifice alone. The man is great in his followers in proportion to the sacrifice he makes for others. And actually sacrifice is the cause of creation also. Which in Purushukta, the Lord sacrificed himself in the yoga to create the universe and the, uh, and the living beings. So, this is basically the uh, end of my talk now about the quiz. You have heard it now. Now, you have to decide yourself, are you a Vedantist or are you a biologist? <laughs> but before you answer this, I want to say something little bit about this happened, similar thing happened. In, uh, uh, while Holy Mother was alive, there was a little girl who was uh, very fond of Holy Mother and Holy Mother was very fond of her. One day, after puja, Holy Mother brought two plates of prasad, sweets. On the one plate hand, she had a plate of rasagulla, in the other hand, she had a plate of jilepi. And she asked the girl, what do you want? Which, which one do you want? Girl looked at this plate one, Rasagulla and Jilapi, looked like a back and forth, could not make up his mind. Said that, can I have both and share with my friends? Holy Mother was so happy that she gave and kissed the girl and gave both and the girl went with the uh, uh, sweets and share with friends. So, you don't have to choice between the Vedanta and biologist, you can have either both also. Thank you very much for your attention and, and thank you very much.